Carbon Lake Conversation. Quick question. Is this the podcast? Are we doing the podcast right now? All right. Welcome back, everyone, uh, to Carbon Lee Conversations. Got your friends Shane and Chad here for today's episode. How's it going, Chad? Um, I'm well. We certainly are here. I'm excited to do another clip with you, Shane. No complaints on my side. Um, but as always, we appreciate the the support from all of you wonderful listeners out there. Um, you know, we're we're just friends that have these conversations to in order to examine the intersection of community, lifestyles, and consumption in our lives. Um, and our goal is to, our goal with this podcast is to create a platform um, for us to share our stories in order to motivate actions, lessen our carbon footprint, and cl- create a space for everyone out there to share their carbonly journeys as well. Um, and once again, let's let's remind everyone that. Uh, you know, we've made it easy for you to listen to us on your favorite podcast app. Um, literally, all you need to do is scroll down, sh- click on show notes, and you'll see find and join the conversation. And that'll give you free access to all of our previous conversations um, so that you, if you can catch up or if you're a number one fan and you listen to us all, to them all, um, we we try to drop every Wednesday. So every Wednesday morning, hopefully when you wake up out of bed, there's a there's a new episode waiting for you um, and, and also make sure to follow us on Instagram and YouTube as well. We have another one of our Carbonly clips for you. And um, you want to go ahead and explain what this clip will entail, Chad? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Shane, thanks for the great introduction for our episodes and what we're doing here on today's clip. So. In the last month, we've spent many conversations talking about our own journeys to sustainability and our own relationships to that. And of course, while we're doing that, I I keep reading and and the New York Times has published an article called This Guide Can Help You Save Money and Fight Climate Change. And for those that sometimes regularly all the time read the New York Times, you notice that they do a pretty good job reporting on options of sustainability, investments of sustainability, why it's important to be sustainable. And I found this article really curious, but also relevant because we are in the age of government subsidies, or to put it another way, the passing of the Inflation Reduction Act, which is major legislation that is aiming to cut planet warming greenhouse gas emissions. But in that and buried in that, not just for like producers of carbon and companies, there's also things that homeowners and individuals and consumers can do to get rebates, find ways to save money if they're investing in that. I thought it would be great in this clip to go through the advice, the New York Times layout in this article um, by Nadja Popovich and Elena Shao. Um, I'll link it in the show notes, of course. But it was published here on February 1st and spend some time talking through that, you know, our, our relationship to those options and then maybe our relationship our readers have to those options and compare that to what we've been talking about in our own journeys. So that's the goal in this clip is to get a little tactical, um, but also, yep. you know, make it real. So anything that you have like feedback of that or it makes you start thinking right away because i know shane you're kind of a newer homeowner and this yep. guide is geared towards primarily homeowners or people that own homes drive cars yeah um definitely what what pops what pops in my head first is um you know since the beginning one of the kind of the lines that i've used is like with just being carbonly is like not everyone can afford um, solar panels and electric vehicles and things like that. Um, mm-hmm. so it, it is, even though it's still something that I think of, um, it is nice to yeah. see s- some of these laws come into place to where it can help kind of, um, introduce these things to, to people that, you know, typically wouldn't, 
invest in a solar panel or electric vehicle. Sure. Um, there's still some limitations, you know, on it, but we'll go, we'll kind of go through it a little bit and, and, um, and see, but yeah, that's definitely the first thing that comes to mind. Well, I think, um, you make, I don't think you, you bring up a really good point because part of the goals of sub subsidies like this or government programs is to build awareness, generate, mm -hmm. you know, I guess in the irony of it all is generate more consumption for the things that will help us be more sustainable in our consumption. Right. Yep. Like yep. It, it, it's kind of a conundrum when I think about it and say that out loud. Um, but I think overall, like that's how changes happen. Like we don't move from the horses and buggies to the automobile or the automobile to, you know, whatnot without, you know, government subsidies or government kind of giving us a push. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, lots of lots of changes across the, the, the world, but primarily the United States has been done that way. Yep. Um, and uh, I want to make sure I get it right. The, the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, I think is what they call it, which has so many connotations, <laughs> historical ones. I'll just leave there. Um, <laughs> really lays out from a homeowner's guide or maybe a renter's guide, then you can convince your landlord to do some of these things to a, a, a electric vehicle guide. And again, option one is get a home energy audit, like mm -hmm. spend the money, get the rebates to find out like what is your home doing, right? And this looks like you can get a tax credit that covers 30% the cost of an audit. And then, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of exasperated with the statement, clearly I can't get out of here, but like, I don't know what percent of the reason that we do this, 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 the carbon lake conversations for, but it, it's a big one. Like the more, you know, that's what we're trying to do is drive awareness, you know, get people to connect to this stuff. So doing a home energy yep. audit is a big deal. Like you can't really know where you go or what you should do or why you should do it unless you actually yep. know how much energy are you consuming? Where are you wasting it? Like what appliances and devices are leaking or just really bad. Um, and it looks mm -hmm. like you can get one of these going through the end of 2032. So for those of you that right, aren't I just homeowners, saw that. I just saw that. you know, but might be in the next You've got plenty of time, eight years, it's nine to eight, eight to nine years. It, you got time. But again, like you could probably get your landlord maybe to sign up for one of those, um, depending on your relationship with mm -hmm. them. And then that way they, I mean, in the end, like if you upgrade everything, you're all doing better, um, saving yeah. money you know, being more effective and efficient. So the others is install yep. solar panels, other renewable energy options. Like this has been an ongoing thing for a long time. Like we've talked a little bit about solar panels production in the past. We could talk a whole lot more on where they're being produced and how they're being produced. Um, but like, again, you don't really need or can use solar panels. I mean, in rare cases, like unless you have a home or a place or, or a position to do that. But it looks like you can get up to 30% of qualifying purchases with no cap on total purchase price. Um, so this is a big deal, you know, that yep. might actually make it from, maybe it's not feasible to do to making it feasible of a project for many homeowners. So good thing there. Again, you got to 2034 to get this done. Um, this one I like, because a lot of us that- Same own homes or maybe rent a home or live with our family members. Like we all pay bills, right? Yeah. So if we're paying bills to heat, cool, manage power, our, our homes, making those energy saving renovations and buying efficient appliances go a long way. Definitely it does create a demand for newer things, more resources being used, but that's also a good thing for all those people working those jobs. And especially if you're buying American, like these are things that are mm -hmm. built here in house or in country. Yep. Um, again, I, I think 30% seems to be the going rate for the government here. You can cover up to 30% of your, your costs and certain appliances that meet their, their requirements. And but no, I, would, I, I like, I like this one though, cause it says there's no cap on the total purchase price, which is, which is pretty good, you know, cause you know how sometimes, places or even the government will, oh, we'll give you 25% rebate, but then the rebate's only on like up to 
ten thousand dollars or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like this yeah, is yeah. this is a mm-hmm. true. And it looks like it even applies to like windows and doors, skylights, insulation. So like all these things that we can do, like I'm not going to comb through the research now and yeah. maybe not even in the future, but my guess is there is a lot of wasted energy that we could capture or not need if all of our homes were insulated properly or to the mm-hmm. the code that makes them more sustainable. Like, like that's a big shift. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there are students have argued for a PhD doing research around that. Um, the big act mm-hmm. is how do you actually get people to make that change, right? And I would argue the IRA here, this this, the, this is part of that movement. Um, I like this one. I don't know how many of you understand or know what a heat pump is, but I'm a big fan of them. Um, didn't really believe in them or understand the science of it until I was in mm-hmm. my late 20s. But now that I do, and I'm like, oh, these things make a lot of sense. Geothermal, heat pumps, like not going to get into the science of this, but... Um, they're they're currently uh, this has been like a big hot topic here in the winter and especially up in like the new england states um heat pumps have been outselling traditional natural gas furnaces um so people are choosing to use a heat pump because it saves them a whole bunch of energy and, and it's easy to install compared to a furnace and it might even be a little bit safer don't quote me on that um but again you can get a 30 percent tax credit and I yep. bet a bunch of Americans are doing that um, and upgrading the way that they heat their home. Um, but heat pumps work also to help regulate the temperature, warm or cold, up to a certain range of temperatures is a good way to put it. So, so if it's, you're not, in the t- it's not like a, it's not going to cool your house. Like, I don't know much about the heat pumps. It's not going to cool your house like an air conditioner or anything, right? It's just not, but it will keep it mildly, mildly. Oh my God, I can't say it. I'm mildly comfortable. So okay. in essence, again, too much of the science, a heat pump works on an air exchanger or a, 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 a temperate temperature exchanger that based off of the difference of the indoor and the outdoor temperatures, it like generates heat or cools and moderates the climate inside of your house. And it okay. works really well on a range of temperatures. But when you get into the really hot days or the really, really cold days, it's not your best outlet. Um, but I think for someone like you living in Columbus, Ohio, it's probably a good solution for 85% of the year for you. Yep. So yep. Um, yeah, definitely do your research, that. dig into it. What We should get a plumber on here to talk about heat, heat pumps and heat exchange. Yeah. They're a good deal. Um, the next two is like, this is where I think it gets really interesting because they're get rebates and renovations that reduce energy use, get discounts for energy efficient upgrades for lower income households, both, the, both but both of them aren't available yet, which out of all the things we just talked about, like you probably are a homeowner or a multiple homeowner or think about being a homeowner for any of these to take, be of interest or be in your wheelhouse. These other ones aren't right? You could actually do these things and get some tax rebates. So I think a lot about the conversations we had and like, I love this article. I love what we're trying to do because it's like big changes like this really move the needle for all of us. And, and I mean, we could all recycle, but if we did these things in addition or mainly these things, it, it'd be a big impact, right? Yeah. But everyone can do that. You know, hence we have these carbon conversations because thrifting's like something I can do, recycling yep. is something I can do. Reducing my food waste is a really easy thing to do to have a big impact, right? Um, this maybe, maybe later, okay, so it's more of a timing thing, but they do have funding, the funding will run out, so. Uh, okay, I see that, so, yeah. Yeah, low income housings, like if you qualify, get, Get in line because I my guess is a lot of people are going to try to use this up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, it's interesting too. That that's a, that's interesting that that's these the ones that are geared. Uh, let's see. So only yeah. I mean, out of all of those that you just listed, I feel like that's the only one that says like until funding runs out. Hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, 
Um, so that's just kind of interesting to me. I'm not a policy wonk. And when I think about this, just at a high <laughs> level, like the ones that are out there that aren't in that it's capped, it has a limited amount of resources mm-hmm. that will generate industry that like if, if two thirds of Americans that need a, a furnace and air conditioner change over or add a heat pump that drives an industry drives a lot of jobs. There's a lot of plumbers that got to install these. There's a lot of sales associates that need to sell these, right? There's a lot of insurance mm-hmm. adjusters have to go on and apply these changes to policies, right? Those are a big deal that generates income adds value to the economy. Um, at, to at what degree and what level, like having all those chain updates and upgrades to low income houses that will reduce energy use, give them higher efficiency um, appliances. Like I'm not here to do the math there, but I think both are good. So I can see the cap. I can mm-hmm. see the, you know, the unlimited growth, but I don't know. Like there's an investment missing. And, and again, like, if you do own a home and you're low income, like this is for you, go get it. Right. Yeah. But do, I mean, you, we've talked a lot about this in in our conversations. Like, I mean, it all started, like you guys had no clue what all words were. And I'm like, Oh my God, they're so cool. You guys should know. But it was not because they were fashionable, only fashionable, but like they were really easy to understand, like how good they are for the environment. Right. Yeah. Stuff is really good, but, I don't know. I don't want to make any biased assumptions here, but I mean, I mean as a black man homeowner, would have this been on your radar to even think about if we weren't talking about it here? No. So that was another thing that's kind of, as we've had this conversation that comes to mind is like, A, how would I, how would I have found out about this? Like other than, you know, you sending me this art, not, not that only, only you read New York Times. It's obviously one of the most popular. But how many low income people are reading New York Times? Um, and then B. So this is my first year. I haven't I haven't filed my taxes yet. But this is my first year as like a full year homeowner filing taxes. And I'm okay. not familiar how to even how to even add these type of things into my, you know what how I mean? Even apply, into my, sure. yeah. how do I even apply to this type of things, which I think is going to be a barrier for not even just the low income people, like for everyone with all of these, it's like, okay, I did this. How do I apply for it? And then, oh, well, what if I lose the, the receipt or, you know, what if I get audited in a couple of years and I can't find the receipt for the heat pump that I bought or, you know, just things like that. It's just kind of yeah, stress, you know? I love, I love that thinking. Cause like, I mean, I've been a multiple homeowner and I'm like, I have so much privilege and I didn't even think about that at all. You know, like yeah. I'm not, if I was to do these things, I wouldn't even be worried about it. And, and part of me is like, None of them on the list, other than maybe solar panels in in our house in Texas, um, like are attractive because we're we've done some of this work. Again, we have the privilege, we had the resources and the means mm-hmm. to do this. So this tax incentives aren't actually incentives for us. And then, I mean, I've probably said funny. it a few times in this call is like, why do we do carbonly conversations? Right? This is, this is it. And I mean, just before we were recording, I was telling you about. You know, I had some, I had this tree in my yard that I need to cut down because it just, it's not good for my house. It's dangerous. It's, and it's 3000. I mean, it's literally $3,000 to cut this tree down, you know, and, and it just has me, it's going to set me back a little bit because it's like, I mean, it's a big chunk of money. I'm going to do it Mm -hmm. because it, you know, just, it's better for my safety and just for my my property, but you know, there's just so many, you know, pros and cons about being a homeowner. And I just think about, you know, some of the people that may want to make these upgrades that are listed in this article, but then you have things like that, that come about or, um, so it's, 
it's it's interesting you know it's a so, yeah it's that, a it's an interesting that, topic that tree the meaning like i i totally get it and i understand why it needs to come down but i'm like we don't want to cut down a tree you know like it shades things yeah. there's the ecosystem but yeah not all trees are in the right place for the way we live in our communities and our houses and and you can plant yeah. new trees multitudes of them versus having just one big one shading everything up. Yep. I get it. But the the bleeding heart tree lover in me is like, no. But- yeah. But I did, I did plant, I have last year, oh. I planted, you know, three new trees in my yard before I even decided to chop this one down. So even though it'll be many, many years before they're as big as this tree is, um, for all the tree lovers out there, I did replace the tree a little bit at least yeah so and you'll have more room to do more of that too um but yeah. no i you know back to this article i totally agree like it's being a homeowner you're faced with a lot of choices if you're even lucky enough to be a homeowner right like i just can't too. like yep. i know i've said it a couple times like go ask your landlord convince them to do these take advantage of these these how uncomfortable is that like are you going to raise my rent because I have more efficient like appliances? Like, like is the mm-hmm. incentive even there to do that? Like I question yep. all of that, especially yep, across that's like, a good, like a that's big a good city point. like New York. Like how many refrigerators are in apartment buildings, right? Like in New York, mm-hmm. just in, in a hundred or not even a hundred, 20 city blocks. Right. And mm-hmm. imagine if all of them got swapped out with energy efficient ones. And make Bottom a big money. debt, right? Yeah. Who's who's gonna pay for those? Who owns them if you rent? You know, yep. like there's just so many questions. Yep. Oh my god. It's interesting. It well, definitely I want to do more research on it, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, usually like we like these clips to be informative, get to the point, here's what's gonna happen, let's explore in it. This one's more thought provoking because it it. Mm-hmm. These are good things, but they're also not available for everyone. Or if they are, do people even know it's available or comfortable enough or have, I mean, granted, you, you got to be a homeowner and you can afford to buy these things to get these rebates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Conundrums. Yeah. Carbon leak conundrums. Glad. Maybe that's, um, maybe that's what we call this one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect title for it. Um, but I'm glad you shared this article because, like I said, I mean, maybe in a maybe down the line, I would have heard of of this. Um, but it's good to know now, especially beginning of the year. Um, I, you know, I hope to make some upgrades this year on the house, so that'll actually help me mm-hmm. pick and choose what I do. You know, so yeah, hopefully everyone else out there learned something from this conversation the same way, same way we did, and. You know, that's the goal. Any uh, and any accountants out there that have any tips on how to apply these rebates, you know, reach out in the comments. <laughs> yeah, please. Like maybe maybe we can become the number one podcast for accountants and plumbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. We'll add another professional on the list. <laughs> yeah. But. But I'm glad we got the plumbers in our camp because heat pumps, that's right up a plumber's alley. So, yep, that's for sure to get get one on and talk about it. Well, thanks for sharing this. I think that, yeah, no problem. I think that that puts this clip to bed. We'll share some more in the show, show notes. Um, and we'll be in, we'll be back some more carbon lake clips soon. See y'all later.